When we talk about dry hopping, um, when should we do it and for how long should we do it? So when is the best time to dry hop? Traditionally, the advice has been to dry hop towards the tail end of fermentation. So this is usually around day four or day five. However, the thinking on this is starting to change. There are also some unforeseen problems that can arise uh, when dry hopping. More on that at the tail end of this video. But first, let's dive in and see what Helen has discovered on the topic of when you should be dry hopping your beers. So when can you dry hop? Uh... Now, again, this is where we've got a lot of information um, out there. And when I was doing research um, for um, this um, presentation today, there's still, we've, we're dealing with, um, I suppose, emerging science. And we're also dealing with people's um, sensory perceptions mm. as, as well. Okay, and uh, you can uh, read that one brewer um, is, is pro doing this and another brewer is going doesn't work for me it's like well how can that be very subjective yeah. it's very very subjective um you can dry hop when your wort is you know around that 18 19 we are talking ales here 18 19 oh, 20 yeah. degrees so um you can um dry hop then you can dry hop when it's cold you can dry hop in um we'll, and we'll touch a little bit more on this you can dry hop in secondary you can dry hop in in a keg so these are all things that people do. Whatever's working for you, keep doing. Um, but to minimise some of the issues that um, we have with um, um, introducing oxygen or, or other issues um, when we're dry hopping, is to dry hop during active fermentation. You can dry hop at high Krausen. So as soon as you know activity starts, start dry hopping. Active fermentation, so you know around that um, couple of days in, three to four days in, when it's still still active, it allows the yeast to metabolise any oxygen that's actually um, got in um, when you're trying to get it into um, the hops into your um, your fermenting vessel, and provides us that um, added side effect of biotransformation. Uh -huh. That's the buzzword at the moment. Uh, it is yes. It is a hot buzzword and I struggled with with this one a little bit because it uh, it's a it's a little bit of a um, it's 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 science. So just just to touch on biotransformation it's the transformation of hop oils in the presence of active yeast. That's the summary. Sorry. That's the summary. The, yeah, the yeast do some magic stuff to the and, hops. Yes, and, and some hops um, are sort of more suited to biotransformation than others and I didn't take a note of what those hops <laughs> are. But I will point you to information where you can um, you can find out more information about biotransformation and what hops um, yeah. Um, what hops work um, work better, and uh, what's actually happening during during that process? I'll chuck so, some links in the uh, description. Yeah. Um, eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so if you have been um, dry hopping at um, you know during active fermentation, uh, you've probably just been doing doing a really good thing for your beer. So, I didn't know it, but I I have been dry hopping um, about day three day four for many many years now I you know my beer's got an opening gravity of you know 10 I'm sort of wanting to hit, hit it when it's around 102 1025 okay. 1023 um, that's when I'm actually putting my dry hops I've usually just been doing one dry hop um, dry hop addition so I'm not um, I'm not opening I, I just have a plastic plastic fermenter. I know that there's a lot of different funky um, types of fermenters out, out there at the moment and there's different ways of, of actually fermenting but I still just use a basic um, plastic fermenter with an airlock yep. um, and the opening of it, it sounds so terrible yep. we're talking about um, dry hopping 101 opening up the lid yep. and throwing the hop the hops in yep. um, which is allow, allows oxygen in however I've been um, I've been escaping the issues around um, introducing oxygen because I've been doing it active fermentation which allows the yeast to um, to actually clean up um, yeah, yeah to cl okay. clean that up do you use a bag when you chuck the hops in or do you just uh, chuck the hops we're, in? we're going to you're gonna get to that yeah we're gonna get, get to that, okay, yeah. get to that. okay so the length of time that you you dry hop for is something which is becoming coming under increasing scrutiny 
So there's, yeah. in, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that ext maximum extraction of all the flavours and aromas that you want from your hops is not happening in a couple of days, it's not happening in a week, it's happening in hours, 24 hours, it's happening really? that quickly. And if you use cryo hops, it happens really quickly because it actually stays, stays in, um, in suspension. So, food for thought. It does seem that adding your dry hops during active fermentation, not after, carries some advantages. Namely, uh, avoiding oxidisation. Yes, oxygen is bad for beers, okay? You may have noticed a bit of a running theme in our videos lately. But there is also a side benefit. You get to avoid something called dry hop creep. What is dry hop creep? Uh, well, we have a video on that too. Yeah, and who knew that uh, flavour and aroma extraction happened so quickly? 24 hours at room temperature sounds like it might be enough. But what do you think? Uh, is this enough for you to start changing your dry hopping regime? Or not? Maybe you're just happy doing what you're doing. Maybe you've got some of your own tips and tricks you'd like to share. If so, uh, yeah, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Oh, and we do actually answer the question, does Helen dry hop in a bag? Uh, we've got a video on it right there.